What's up guys, my name's Alice, I'm an artist and this video is all about how I make my greetings cards. So I sell my greetings cards on Etsy, not on the high street, my own website and I'm looking into wholesale soon. So I wanna be like really transparent with everything that I do in my business because I just wanna help out as many people as I can. I know that starting a business like this is a total minefield and just, you know, so many things to learn. I wanna share like everything I do just to, you know, help some of you guys out. Just a quick disclaimer, this is not the only way of doing things, okay? Like, you, this is just what I do, so you don't need to like buy everything that I have or do everything I do, like nothing like that. I'm just sharing what I do. So I'll be sharing the equipment and paper I use, what kinds of cards I actually make, and then show you my process from start to finish, including some valuable tips that I've learned along the way. So let's get into it. This is the printer I use to print off my greetings cards. I'll leave a link to the video where I go like super in depth about this printer below. This is an Epson XP970. The important thing about my printer is, oops, it has a rear feeder. So it's really important that your printer, if you're, you know, if you're gonna make, <laughs> Ash is coming. <laughs> if you're gonna make greetings cards at home that your printer has a rear feeder because it's, you know, you're putting thick card through your printer and it just won't be able to handle it. You will probably damage your printer if you try and put thick card, you know, just through, if you don't have a back feeder, just through like this bit here, it just, it, it won't work. It will cause your printer so many problems. So if you are looking into a printer and you wanna print greetings cards, look for a printer that has a rear feeder. This beautiful piece of equipment, I, in my opinion, is essential if you wanna make cards at home, especially if you wanna sell them. I put off buying one of these for so long and I don't know why, like it only cost me like 20 pounds, but I thought like, oh, is it, you know, it's 20 pounds, man. Do I really need to spend that money? But yes, you freaking do. <laughs> so this has like been a complete game changer. I don't know how I would fold cards so nicely with a beautiful fold without this. It's just necessary, like I highly recommend getting one of these. Like you don't have to buy this exact one. I will leave a link to this one below on Amazon, but you know, you don't need this exact one, but just get yourself one of these. It's so essential. So it comes with like a little scoring tool, you know, you can measure, you can write your own little measurements on here. So for your specific cards and stuff, it just makes life so much easier. And I'll show you later on in this video exactly how to fold your cards like perfectly without getting any cracking or anything, because sometimes that can happen. And it did happen to me quite a lot. So, you know, later on in the video, I'll give you some tips for getting the perfect folds. Another piece of equipment that I just couldn't live without is a paper trimmer. I think that's what it's called. So I don't know if you can get like a sense, it's shaking the camera here, a sense of how heavy this like bad boy is. This is a beast. <laughs> this is my mum's actually and I borrow it all the time for cutting my cards down to size. It's amazing quality. I think it cost her, I wanna say like 80 pounds and I think that was on offer. So they are expensive, but the difference is in quality is just amazing. So. I do have one myself, which is a much cheaper version. I think this was maybe like 20 pounds or something, but there is a massive difference <laughs> between the two. This one is just beautiful to use and I love using it. And yeah, I would highly recommend investing in one of these if you're making your own cards and prints and stuff at home. It just makes life so much easier. This is the paper I use. So I think this cost me, I got this off eBay. I'll give you the link. To it below. I got this off eBay, I think it was like nine pounds for 50 sheets, which is pretty good value to be honest. I have obviously wasted <laughs> quite a few bits of paper just, you know, practicing and getting things perfect, but really great value. It's 300 GSM, double-sided matte coated paper. I know that my printer can take up to 300 GSM paper and it takes it really well. It works so well with my printer, it works really well with my style of art and the quality is just great. So I really would recommend this paper. You know, it comes down to personal preference. So if you want like a thicker paper, then, you know, you might wanna look into thicker papers if your printer can handle it. If you're doing say watercolor art, for example, you might wanna look into like a more textured watercolor card or something, but this is perfect for me and I would definitely recommend it. Here are some examples of cards I make and sell. So you might notice that the, uh, they're a little bit smaller than usual. And this is for three reasons. So I do the A6 size as well as the A7 size, I think it's A6, yeah, A7 size. So this is for three reasons. So the first reason is honestly just personal preference. I just love the little cards. I think it makes them stand out. It's quirky, it's fun. And I still remember a tiny little card this size that I got when I was like 10. I think it was like a Winnie the Pooh card, but it was small and it was so cool and I loved it. And that's just stuck with me. So it's, first reason is just personal preference. The second reason is because of the card I use is 300 GSM. That's the maximum that my printer can take. I mean, I could put thicker paper in there, but I don't want to ruin my printer. 
and it just makes things feel a bit sturdier. So this is absolutely fine. Like there's nothing wrong with this. It's still pretty sturdy and everything, but this just feels a lot like higher quality to me. And the third reason is obviously cost. So postage especially is has just skyrocketed since the pandemic and so expensive just to post like a little card. And if it's smaller, the postage is obviously a little bit cheaper. So I can pass those savings on to the customer. And also, you know, this is cheaper for me to make as well because I can fit four of these to one sheet of A4 cards. So again, I can just pass those savings on to the customer. And yeah, so here's just examples of some cards I make. You can see obviously it's like colorful, quirky stuff. Yeah. So this is how I create my greetings cards from start to finish. I create mine in Procreate. I put four to one A4 sheet. I use the color mode CMYK. When I've done all this, I export to my lap top of my MacBook Air, edit them a little bit in Lightroom, and then I print them off. So the printer settings I use, I'll show you here. I don't print borderless because sometimes, because it's a thick card, the printer like misaligns the paper a little bit, but I try and get as close to the border as possible. So it's a little bit smaller than A7 size. I use the matte settings and I always print from the rear feeder. So I've got my scoring board, I've got my scoring tool and the cards I want to fold. <laughs> so I got a few tips about folding cards because every time that I was folding cards, I was getting cracks along the fold like this and it was so frustrating and I didn't really know why. So I'm just gonna give you a few tips that have really like helped me just not get any cracks, no signs of cracks or anything when I'm folding cards, just to make things, you know, give things obviously a professional finish because it's not professional to have cracks and things down, down the fold. So few tips I have. So first tip is you want to lay your card down like this so that the front you can see the front and it's kind of inside down and when you're actually scoring down you want to use this side here you don't want to you don't want the tip you don't want to be going down like this you want to get like this this side of the tool here so you might want to measure out exactly where you know you need to <laughs> fold. Uh, for me I kind of know where to fold and actually that lines up pretty nice actually to be fair cool so the pressure you want to make sure that you're actually pressing down enough because that's a big reason i think why my my cards were cracking when i folded them is because i didn't press down enough i didn't make enough of a groove and so when i folded it it cracked so again you want this side here so i'm pressing down quite hard and when you get to the end, you want to make sure that you don't like come off the end like that, because otherwise you can get a little bit, a little bit of damage. Pressing down quite hard, and you want to go down like three to four times. Because this car's quite thick, it can handle it. And then when I'm folding it, hopefully you can see that there's quite a deep groove there. I'm really sorry guys, my camera just completely cut out at the end of that and I didn't realize. So getting to this point again, so you wanna fold over, match up the corners, and then you wanna get this flat edge of your scoring tool here. And then you just wanna kind of run along your card here to kind of press the fold and you have a beautifully folded card without any signs of cracking or anything. So the main thing I would say is the pressure. You definitely wanna make sure that you're using enough pressure when you're actually scoring the card. That was the main difference for me. In terms of the packaging then, so if someone orders a card through like Etsy on my website or not on the high street, I will package it, like I'll veer towards packaging it as plastic free as possible. So I'll just put it, so these are A7 envelopes. So I'll just put it along with an A7 envelope, put them in a stripey bag like this and then you know put branding stickers and a thank you note and stuff in there and then put them in a board backed envelope if i was to do it wholesale so if i was like selling to a retailer i'm not doing it yet but that is something that i'm looking to doing in the very near future and 
what I would do, so I might do a separate video in the future if I start doing that, what I would do to present them. So I'd probably present them either in a like cellophane plastic bag, so present them nicely on there with some branded stickers and stuff, or I would, because a lot of shops now request that your packaging is plastic free, you can get these little removable stickers and attach the card to the envelope and present it like that on a shelf. Yeah, hopefully that gives you an idea of how I go about packaging and yeah. I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it valuable, hopefully. Let me know if you sell greetings cards. I would love to check them out. And as always, if you've got any questions or anything, feel free to ask in the comments or whatever. Cool, thanks so much for watching guys and see you next time, bye.